God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And um, what an amazing, 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 amazing morning this is. And I believe that wherever you are, God will bless you. Let somebody know that the prophet is live. I'm trying to, uh, by the grace of God, come on early. I think it will make it easy before my day gets crazy. Um, sometimes I have just so much to do, but nevertheless, by the grace of God, I am glad that we are here. I want you to share this as many times as you can. As many times as you can, share this over and over again. This is going to be so impactful. It is so necessary. It is so important to understand why certain things happen. If you don't understand it, you may be fighting a losing battle, yet as a child of God, you already have victory. Everything about us and everything about our life, which is ordained by Jehovah God himself, is a matter of understanding spiritual life. Anyone who is ignorant of their spiritual life, anyone that is ignorant of uh, generational patterns and curses, you usually will find yourself in a place of struggling where you should have never struggled. You see, if one generation ignores something, the next generation may ignore it, the third generation may notice it, the fourth generation may be the one that gets free from it. So it takes um, the grace of the living God for you to be wise enough to catch things that are already happening amongst us in order for us to receive the grace of God to get to where the Lord desires for us to get to. So I want you to share this as many times as you can because this is going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. Type, uh, if you can, uh, write to me where you're watching from. Junior Arudo Elias, my son, you've been, you've been faithful for years. May God bless you. Uh, let me see where you're watching from. Type and, and, type and uh, uh, show me where you're, you're watching from. Uh, somebody from Florida, ATL, San Diego, Texas. Okay, let's go. Show me where you're watching from. Whether you're overseas, Nigeria, Kenya, Jamaica. Nice. Uganda, India. Wow. Everyone from Hong Kong. Hey. New Jersey, Belgium, Guyana, Puerto Rico. Uh, this is, this is um, Ethiopia. It's so many, I'm even struggling to catch Ireland. You know, God is good. Keep sharing this, share this as many times as you can. Somebody will be blessed by this. Now, I want us to go quickly and, and I want us to read Genesis uh, chapter 3. And um, we can start from verse 8. And uh, I can read it or somebody else can read it. Who's, who's, who's going to read for us? All right, let's do it. Uh -huh. From verse 8. Genesis 3 from verse 8. Amen. Uh -huh. Genesis 3 verse 8. Yes. And they heard the voice of the Lord God mm -hmm. walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Mm -hmm. Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that mm -hmm. thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, mm -hmm. she gave me of the tree, mm -hmm. and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and mm -hmm. I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, mm -hmm. and above every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And I will put enmity between mm. thee and the woman, mm. and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Stop right there. Now, I'm going to explain something to you before we, we go extra profound. 
I want you to notice that when God created the earth, he formed the earth for Adam to replenish it. But God knew extremely well because God is the creator. He knows everything. Nothing can be hidden from him. The Lord knowing all things beyond what anyone can know, as he created Adam, he had already created Eve also, and Eve was hidden within Adam. Now, the, help, the word helpmate there, you notice that when God created animals and they were brought to Adam and Adam gave them names, or Adam called their names, you, you, you notice something extremely interesting here. That Adam is looking for a helper. Meaning that Adam has no ability to fulfill his destiny without his helper. The word helper there, you see, for somebody to help you, you don't get a helper who is less than you. A helper must be either at the same level with you or higher than you. I, I don't know if you're understanding. Because their duty is to ease your burden into carrying what God has given you to do. Let me give you an example. Another name for the Holy Spirit is what? Comforter. What is another one? Helper. The Holy Spirit is also called a helper to us. Because we cannot finish anything that God has given us without a helper. Now, does that mean because the Holy Spirit is our helper is less? Absolutely not, because the Holy Spirit is God. So you have to understand that our destiny as children of God to be led, to receive direction, to receive comfort, to receive all this uh, um, um, uh, insight and foresight, to know the mind of the Lord Jesus, that capacity has been given to us, has been injected in us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But the Holy Spirit is just coming to help. But notice the help that the Holy Spirit is giving us. It is so great. It looks like it's only the Holy Spirit doing it. It's like we, are, we just have to be present and the Holy Spirit carries us tr through. Good. We just have to persevere and everything else will happen. Listen to what the Bible says. It is not by strength nor by might, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. I don't know if somebody's getting this. So when you look at the word helper, when it's talking about the woman, I will get him a helpmate. You need to understand that it is not saying God will give you somebody less. Yeah. And when the Bible says the woman is the weaker vessel, it's not talking about their capacity spiritually. Amen. It is speaking about their place in terms of covering, man, listen to what the Bible says. It says, man is the image of God and woman is the image of the man. Yeah. So in terms of spiritual covering, because she has to be covered, she's vulnerable in that sense. Not in capacity, not in prayer, not in function, not in ability. Amen. That's a wrong interpretation many people find themselves in. But now understand this. The place of Adam and Eve was so strong that when God came, he said, uh, Adam, why are you hiding? Did you eat of the tree I told you not to? Adam said, uh, he said, God, I never, I, I never did it. The woman you gave me, <laughs> do you hear the line? The woman you gave me, gave me and I did eat. Mm -hmm. Notice, because she's the helper, whatever she brings to Adam, Adam has to take. 
So if she says this is good, Adam is not in a position to resist because she's the help. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. She's the help in the sense that whatever Adam needs to fulfill on earth, not only in replenishing what is in it, but also for the destiny of mankind, it's Eve that knows better. So whatever Eve brings, Adam must oblige. I don't know if you're understanding. This is the first one. So Adam says, Lord, the woman you gave me, gave me the tree, and I did eat of it. Notice God didn't tell him, why weren't you wise enough? Don't you have wisdom enough not to listen to her? Because when God created the woman, the woman was supposed to be the intermediate. He was the one that tells him, oh, actually, we should go left. We should go right. And Adam has to listen because that is his helper. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm trying to take you somewhere. This is good. Now, let me prove to you. Let me prove to you. That's why you find even in the world we have sayings like, um, behind every strong man, there is a strong woman. Even though a woman was not taken from the backbone, it should be besides every strong man, beha- besides every successful man, there is a powerful woman. It should be like that because she was taken from the rib, not from the backbone. That's right. So she shouldn't be behind. That's good. Okay. Now, now hear me by the Spirit of God. I want you to hear me and hear me well. This is why you find a very interesting thing when God is dealing with Eve. And I'll come to the serpent so that you understand the place of Eve. Hmm. I want you to read verse 16. I want you to read verse 16. Verse 16. Uh Uh-huh. Unto the woman he said, Uh I will greatly multiply thy sorrow Uh and thy conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, Mm -hmm. and thy thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Stop right there. Notice the word sorrow there is not simply speaking about pain Mm -hmm. in childbirth. It's more than that. But what does the Bible say? It says that before a woman conceives... Remember, we read it in John, and this is the Lord Jesus saying. The pain represents your time. Mm. Okay. The pain she feels, the sorrow, is mm. to tell her her time has come mm. to be delivered of a child. Mm. Uh, are you hearing this That's by the Spirit right. of God? Now, now catch this and catch this well. So God is saying, I will greatly multiply. Meaning there was always a sign. (laughs) Sorry. There was always a sign to let you know that you're about to give birth. But God said, I will greatly multiply it. So the signal was always there. Are you getting it? But now you have to notice what he says, because look at this. I will multiply it. There was pain, Mm -hmm. but now it is multiplied. But look at what now the end solution is for God. You shall desire, (laughs) you shall, your desire shall be contrary to your husband. He shall rule over you. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but from now on, he will rule over you. Now, why is God saying that from now on, or if you read it in King James, can you read it in King James for me? 16, verse 16. Unto the woman he said, Mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And so notice, between Adam and Eve, the reason why Eve was powerful, not greater, but power, mm-hmm. she was strong, she was powerful, is because she understood pain. Wow. Wow. I don't know if you're understanding this. She understood pain. Adam never knew what pain was. Yes. Are you listening to me? Oh wow. What makes the Lord Jesus powerful? What makes the Lord Jesus God? 
because of the pain he suffered for people. Whoever is suffering is paying a higher price. I don't know if you're hearing me. Pain is sacrifice because anything you sacrifice must be confirmed by pain because a sacrifice is not easy. So God now said, no, this one, I will multiply it. I will multiply it. It will be more. That's why the Bible also goes to say, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities. So a confirmation of God knowing our pain, knowing our sorrow because he became man, it is the suffering he went through. Not because of the joy, the suffering. So the one who was carrying the, the capacity and the seed to produce ma man had to know pain to understand the value of the people who are coming because I, I, I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm hoping that you have the capacity to understand. So the only one between two of them that knew pain was Eve. Now God is saying, no, I will multiply it. And I'll tell you in a second why he multiplied it. But I want you to read the, continue now. Notice something very interesting. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, mm -hmm. and thy desire shall be to thy husband. First of all, he said, in sorrow you shall bring forth your children. Mm -hmm. First he said, I will multiply it, meaning it was always there. Mm -hmm. But now even in bringing them out, there will be pain. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Now finish. N notice this. And he shall rule over thee. Your desire will be for your husband, but he will rule over thee. Mm -hmm. Notice, Eve and Adam were at the same level. Mm -hmm. But the one who was supposed to be the compass for Adam was Eve. Yeah. That's good. But because of what Eve did, her desire will be for her husband, meaning that your desire will be right there to be with him. Mm -hmm. But from now on, he will rule over you. Mm. This is good. I don't know if you're hearing me. Yes. He will rule over you. Yeah. Meaning the moment that the woman, let me say it this way. Mm. Let, me, let me say it this way so that you understand. The Bible says it like this. The man is the glory of God and the woman is the glory of the man. So you have to understand this. That the one who represents human beings is the woman, not even Adam. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you're understanding wow. what I'm trying to say. Man is the glory of God, meaning yes. Adam is a reflection of God. Yes. And the woman is the reflection of the man. So you have to understand what that means. When God looks at man, mm -hmm. he sees himself. Yes. When he looks at woman, he sees the, he sees the world. Yes. Yes. So I, I don't know if you're getting this. Yes. Man being the image of God, when God looks at a man, he sees himself. But when he looks at a woman, he sees human beings. This is why the talk of the seed is not even being considered to Adam himself. A woman has no seed. So why is God saying you and your seed? Not Adam, you have to plant a seed. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. This is good. Now, in order for the devil to destroy the world, he doesn't need me. He needs a woman. Wow. Now you didn't hear what I just told you. If the devil is to destroy the earth, he has to begin with a woman. Because if he touches the woman, he has touched the world. I don't know if you're understanding this. Okay, let me show you. Let's go a little deeper so that you can get this. 
Are, are you there? If you're online, you're understanding this type one. If you don't, we can go into questions. I'll answer you. Type one, if you're getting this. Somebody said it's too deep this morning. I'm trying by the grace of God. Okay, they are catching it. Okay. Now, now, now hear this. Do you realize that Adam and Eve never had children in the garden? Satan intercepted the woman way before, way before Adam and Eve got intimate. Because if Adam became intimate with Eve before the tree, then there will be a race of people that are not affected by sin. I don't know if somebody is getting this. Uh, I don't know if somebody is hearing me. So Satan had to make sure. I need to get the woman first. Because in her, that is where every man will come from. If I can mess her up, I have messed up the whole human race. I don't need Adam. I need the helper. Yes. Because the helper is the one that has the ability to help him fulfill his destiny. Yes. Notice, Adam's mistake was never to sin. When we say Adam sinned, we say that because Eve is considered under Adam's covering. But you notice Adam's sin was never that he was deceived. Mm -hmm. Adam's sin was that because you listened to your wife, mm -hmm. you are still in authority. Yeah. You are supposed to carry each other to, you know, carry each other. Yeah. How could you allow yourself not to recalibrate this thing? Mm -hmm. But you listened. I know you listen because she's your help and it is true I gave her to you. But because you listen to your wife, mm -hmm. I'll make your hard work. Mm. I'll make you suffer when you're working by the sweat of your brows. Mm. The earth will not yield to you. But notice, the seed in Adam is not touched. God is not cursing sperm. That's right. That's right. I don't know if you're getting That's what right. I'm saying. God is not cursing Adam's ability to make his wife pregnant. He is not even talking about it. Right. He is focused on the work Adam is supposed to do. Yes. Somebody asked, don't we carry inherit sin? Let me show you something. You'll be shocked. Let me show you something to confirm. <laughs> let me show you something. I didn't even write this down, but let me give you something. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, somebody, somebody else, you remain there, okay. but somebody go to First Timothy chapter 2, 14. First Timothy 2, 14. Mm -hmm. And Adam was not deceived. Mm -hmm. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Who was in the transgression? Not Adam. <laughs> this is why God did not need to go through Joseph. You don't get it. God did not need a physical man to be pure. In order for Christ, our Savior, to be holy in conception. He needed a woman that was pure. He didn't need a man. Uh, somebody didn't get this. Wow. 
Joseph was there to be a covering. Okay, let me, let me give you an example, right? If you know genealogy of the Lord Jesus, you can find that in the book of Matthew. And if you know the, the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will notice that Joseph and Mary actually come from the same family. They are relatives. If you track their genealogy, they all come from the same guy. They all come from David. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you notice that the credit of Jesus being the son of David, a lot of people think it is, <laughs> it is because of Joseph. Because of Joseph. Not necessarily. Joseph comes from David. It is true. But so does she. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, God needs a holy woman, a righteous woman, in order for him to plant seed in her. It wasn't necessary for, for a man to be involved in conceiving the Lord Jesus. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> okay, think about it this way. Let me, let me, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Adam was the only human being that did not come from another man. That's mm right. -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how was Adam affected by what Eve did? Because Eve, both in the flesh, Let me say it this way. Eve, by the flesh, she is part of Adam. Because she's taken from his rib. That's right. yeah, that's right. So if she's the bone of the bone, the flesh of the flesh, if you touch Eve, you have touched Adam. But Eve being the ground that every human being must come through, no longer from Adam, if Satan makes Adam mess up, it will not be as effective as if he gets the woman that every man will come from. I don't know if this is making sense. Okay, we have over 3,000 people watching, but we only have uh, uh, 1,300 likes. Let's get the likes up. Let's get more likes up. Let's get it more up. If, if you can understand this, type one and share this as many times as you can. Share this as many times as you possibly can. We are going somewhere with this. And I know the Lord Jesus will bless you to understand something. The Lord Jesus will help you to understand something. Hallelujah. Now, now capture this by the Spirit of God. Capture this by the Spirit of God. Eve is going to be the mother of everyone. Of course she carries the DNA of Adam. But that DNA is also in her. So whatever touches her, even what is of Adam that is in her, is already also messed up. So you hear Timothy saying, the woman was the one that was deceived and she was the one in the transgression or she's the one that sinned. So the devil being strategic... And because the Bible begins by telling you, now the serpent was wiser than any beast of the field. Meaning he had already calculated this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why it's pointing you to his brilliance. Wow. 
Is, is somebody hearing me? So you notice already from the beginning, it's telling you how clever <laughs> the devil is. Because he never whispered to Adam, hey, Adam, Adam, come check this fruit out. He knew because it was the duty of the woman to be the compass. And because she is the ground that everyone else will come from, she will be attracted to this knowledge thing. Mm -hmm. And it will be easier to corrupt this Adam guy. Mm -hmm. But if I get her, I've messed up everybody. Because Adam is already prophesying. She shall be called woman because she will be the mother of all living. Uh -uh. Wow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So he has already put the seed, the capacity endorsed in her. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Now, the woman is just told your sorrow will increase. Mm -hmm. And from now on, your desire will be for your husband, but he shall rule over you. Mm -hmm. But the ruling now, many men have abused it, whereby it has become abuse. Mm -hmm. You have to remember to rule must always be like Christ. Must always be like Jesus. Jesus, our, our great king, is not only loving, he is kind. Yes. He covers us, he cleanses us. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. That's why the Bible says, husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church. So the standard of ruling is not being macho and being mean. Is not backing orders around. It is actually being like Jesus. But the issue is also that <laughs> the way society has been formed, we are forgetting that God gave us places. He gave us our place because within our place is where we are effective. So we don't understand that it is actually a lie of the enemy. Of course, a woman can do what a man does in terms of uh, mental capacity. If you look at um, uh, clinical, uh, clinical psychology that I, I really like, I listen to a lot of uh, uh, debates and, 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 and lectures. One of my favorite, um, my favorite uh, clinical psychologists is Dr. Peterson. And uh, uh, he did like a good study and, and, and he said that um, if you look at the, at the brains of men and women, they're actually exactly the same. Uh, the, 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 there's no difference in how their brains function. The difference is men are more industrious mm -hmm. than women are. Men are more industrious, they're more aggressive. You can tell by the, te, whatever that word, I always struggle to say, te, testosterone or whatever. Yeah, English is not my first language. So that, okay, is where the difference begins. And women are more orderly than men. They said they did an experiment that if you put men and women together, women will put themselves in one group and men will put themselves in another group. Not because they want to, it's just because of how we are made. Naturally, it will make us function differently. And this was something that Dr. Jordan Peterson was speaking about. Now, capture this by the Spirit of God. So, it's not that a woman can't do what a man can do. But society is trying to make women replace men and they don't understand why they're doing that. It's an attack of the enemy. Yes. Yes. That's right. Your desire will be for your husband, but he shall rule over you. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need that. Mm. And by doing that, you don't understand that you're actually affecting not just you. You're also affecting the man and you're affecting the human race. It's much deeper than that. It's a demonic attack. 
But here's the interesting thing. Verse 15 says this. Now we're standing. She no, 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 no. Uh, um, uh, Genesis 3, 15. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15. And I will put enmity between thee and... Now, the word enmity or enmity... is the word ebal in Hebrew. This means deep hatred. Mm. Wow. Deep hatred. And I probably pronounced the name wrong, but Hebrew is not my language. <laughs> but the word means deep and profound hatred. Deep and profound hatred. And this was a curse God put on the devil, not on the woman. <laughs> okay. Deep hatred. The devil doesn't like me, but he hates women. Come on. When the devil looks at the world, he's not targeting men. He hates women. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because spiritually, now remember, I am not saying the devil doesn't afflict men. He does. But you have to remember that for the devil to go after a man, if, if, if a man is in a spiritual battle with the enemy, is because he lost the image of God. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get off. No. no. Keep going. <laughs> We're tracking with you. I'm feeling the spirit of delete coming on. No. <laughs> Papa, this is good. You are helping. The first instinct of the enemy is not to attack a man. It's to go after a woman. Naturally, whenever God gives an assignment, most of the time, not always, but if you look in scripture, there are powerful women that were judges like Deborah and them, they were powerful women of God. But it is never as common as the Moseses, the Elijahs, because they are, it, it is the first choice, not because they are better, but remember, men are just there to preserve and cover the woman because the destiny of man actually is with her. So man always represents God. The woman will always represent the human race. Have you ever noticed why is God calling the church his wife? He is never calling the church my son. Why are we called the bride of Christ? <laughs> now you are not getting what I'm saying. Yes. Wow. 
Haven't you ever asked yourself that? Why is Jesus called the second Adam? But Jesus has no wife. <laughs> but he's the second Adam. And out of him, the new race of people are born. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But the destiny of what God wants is with his church. We are the body of Christ. Why? Remember, to fulfill what Adam did. Eve was taken from the side of Adam. Jesus on the cross is also pierced on the side. Water and blood wow. came out. Wow. When a woman gives birth, what happens? Water and blood. Jesus. This is her prophetic symbols. So the destiny is always carried by the woman. The legacy of a man is only preserved by a woman. So in order for me to be continued, I need to find a woman that I'll marry, yeah. conceive with. And by then, even if I go, my bloodline is preserved. Yes. Yes. Amen. I don't know if you're understanding what yes. I'm trying to say. So, 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 so capture this. By the Spirit of God. Satan doesn't like me, but he hates women. Hates you. And the hate is almost like a rival. That is why it's like a rival. Because notice this. The only people mentioned that have seed is the woman and the serpent. That's right. So this whole fight <laughs> is not really about us. You didn't get it. This battle is not really about us. No. Wow. I will put an enmity between wow. you and the woman. Her seed against your seed. Wait, what? <laughs> Go ahead, Musa, you're saying something. Is that why in Revelation the dragon was pursuing the woman? Yes. In the book of Revelation, now you're catching it. Okay. The dragon was never after every man. He was after the woman because of what she was going to deliver. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. The assignment is given to the man. It is always fulfilled by a woman. And that woman passes it on to another man who will continue the same thing that was started. So without the woman, there's no continuation. It's, stop. it's a full stop. This is why all these agendas they are bringing to, to our children in schools, putting them through transitions, is to block something that is supposed to come into the world. That's right. Amen. Yes. 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 Jesus. Speak. The devil is not targeting me. He doesn't like me. I can be a casualty of war. But the devil is after the woman. That's right. Uh, I don't know if people can hear me. Ah, uh, let me see if people can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me. 
if you're capturing me, just type one, 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 as much as you can. Type one, 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 type one. This is the reason. Now, before I give you this reason, you have to remember that in church, there are always more women than men. But not because there are less men in the world. Women outnumber men just by a small margin. It's not a big margin, actually. If you look at the numbers, it's not actually a big margin. Huh? It's like a hundredth of a percent. Like a hundredth of a percent. It's like by a very small margin. So it's basically the same number-ish. Yeah. But there are more women in church. Yeah. More than men. Because it is the natural, it is already genetically within women. Number one, your intuition is already prophetic by nature. Amen. Intuitively. Mm. Women are already better than men. Yeah. Intuitively. Women can pick up certain things that we would never be able to pick up that quick until you are at a certain spiritual capacity. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. But a woman can be like, why did she look at you like that? You're like, huh? Who looked at me where? <laughs> you didn't see those eyes. I gave the same eyes back. You're like, wait. I didn't know there was a wall of eyes. I feel like I'm talking to myself. This is why you find also scripturally, wisdom is not likened to a man. Wisdom is likened to a woman. But also as another creature, as a snake. Wow. I think I messed up. Be as wise as a serpent, but the spirit of wisdom is represented as a woman. She is more precious than pearls. Wait, what? You are helping. The whole time Adam was in the garden, we are not sure how long, because when you read the scriptures, it seems like just one day uh, God creates Adam today, tomorrow Adam gets the helper. No, it took time in the garden. Adam had to discover, I can't do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it means he tried to do certain things, but he could not find his helpmate. Who can be at my level to help me? To carry this out. Not who can be under me. Yes, right. That's right. The whole time he was in the garden, the devil never approached him. Mm-hmm. Wow. The devil never looked for him. The devil actually ignored him. Nah, he's not the one I need. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to mess him up, Who is that person that is supposed to help him? Somebody is saying, Papa, can you talk about Lilith? To be honest with you, many don't even know what this Lilith thing is. They think that Adam had a first wife. That is a lie. Mm -hmm. Lilith is a demon. Mm -hmm. One day I will teach you about that spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not, it has nothing to do with Adam. By reading this, you already know. So the fight has always been about you. Now you understand why I always fear to have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Most of us who are watching right now, 
Many of you came to Christ because of a praying mother. Oh my God, that's right. It is. Amen. Many of you found God because of a praying sister, because of a praying mother, or you are dating somebody and they said, if you're going to be with me, you have to come to That's Jesus. Right. You notice the one who is bringing us back to Christ right. is mostly women. That's right. When the apostles were scattered, they were afraid, they were hiding. They didn't even want to go to the cemetery. Guess who are the first people to go and find out that Jesus was alive? Women. Women were the first ones. A woman was the first one to go and cry at his feet and prepare him for the grave. And Jesus said, you don't, everyone is complaining, ah, why is she doing that? Jesus said, you don't understand what she's doing. She has prepared me. She has prepared my body already for my funeral. Notice, <laughs> no one could prepare his body except a woman. It was prophetic. The woman thinks she's just crying at his feet for her sins. Jesus is saying, ah, she has already prepared me for where I'm going. I'm sure a lot of, remember, uh, the Magi were the first one to give the Lord Jesus gifts. Nowhere did they prepare him for anything. I'm sure people gave Jesus, our Lord, a lot of things. But one woman's action, Jesus said, now she has prepared my body for the grave. And when Jesus is about to, res is resurrected, also a woman that is present. Notice, whenever, whenever God is birthing something into the world, it always begins with a woman. Jesus wants to come to the world. God doesn't appear to Joseph. He appears to Mary first. Joseph is after. You notice that the attack The attack of barrenness is usually with women. Yes. Yeah. 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 Usually with women. Great men who are supposed to be born, their mothers could not conceive. There was a conflict spiritually that God had to intervene. And open their womb in order for them to conceive. And when they conceived, they conceived somebody that was so important to the body. This is why you find even this doctrine in the church to stop women from preaching. Some of you didn't get it. <laughs> this is why that doctrine came in. Ah, you cannot preach, you cannot do. But they don't understand that there is a side. If we are all made in the image of God, it means that if you silence a woman, you have silenced a side of God. That's right. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because we are not complete until we all come together. Right. It's not done. So let me say it again. Let me say it again. The devil doesn't like me, but he hates you. He hates women. This, the reason why women go through spiritual warfare 
more than anyone. It always seems like the mothers are carrying the burden for the family. It's in a very rare cases you find that they don't care. But that in itself also for a woman who carried a child for nine months, who is nurturing a home not to care about her home, that in itself is an attack. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because it's not even nature. You find that the woman is not as physical as a man, but she's the first one to want to defend the family. That's right. That's right. I feel like I'm talking to That's myself. Right. Oh, ah, you mess with my family. I'm going to do Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> The battle, that is why we are called a covering of the family. Why are we covering? God is our covering, right? But who is, who is fighting? Us. He is protecting us while we are in the fight. The husband is covering his house including his wife, because she's in the fight. you find there are more women intercessors than men. Everything spiritual, both physical and spiritual. And when we talk about spirituality, whether we speak about the good spirituality, which is walking in Christ Jesus, and the demonic spirituality, there are more witches. Remember, in fact, the word witch was actually really more connected to women. It was more feminine. Yeah. Every time you saw witches, you thought of Nani Makfi. <laughs> <laughs> Culturally, I mean, let's be honest. I'm not saying there are no wizards and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to explain to you is this simple truth. And I'll be finished very soon. What I'm trying to explain to you is uh, this simple truth. Satan is after the woman because... If he destroys the woman, he has destroyed every family. Moses, one of the greatest deliverers, was preserved by his own sister. This is the reason why it seems like you are fighting a battle by yourself. You are trying to get your family on board to pray, but it doesn't seem like they want to pray. You want to align them with God, but they don't see the value in it. You are seeking God concerning, um, Father, let them come to life. Let them, let them receive you. You are the one praying. In fact, there's a meme that I saw on, on, on IG of a boy sleeping and he just hears a woman. Ah! And then she's putting anointing oil on him. That was our reality growing up. Mothers would just hear my mom for 30 in the morning. Rabba shakata baba. Lord, use my children. Let them be so lowly. Let them be lower than the, than the uh, um, what do we call it? What do you use to wipe the floor? Mop. She would be like, make them so humble. Make them so meek like the mop that sweeps the floor. Let them know you. My mother would pray and pray and pray. At 6 a.m., we are all being anointed, being woken up. Line up in the living room. We are all going to pray. We have to sing worship songs and pray as a family. Okay, now go back to your business, whether you're going back to sleep or going to school. That was the routine. 
Hawa, <laughs> it was deep. We suffered in a good way. <laughs> When a woman's ability to pray is dry, you are under serious attack. And there is a lot of people that will suffer because of you. But here's the good thing. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. The reason why you are not fighting effectively, because remember, within that same thing, God told the devil, I'll make you enemies with a woman. But notice, this was not said to the woman. So the woman doesn't know that she's the devil's target. But at the same time, the devil has been told, you are already going to lose this fight, but this is your punishment. You would want to destroy her and her seed so bad, but every time you do it, your head will be crushed. You will always lose this fight. I'm talking to the wrong people. You will always lose this fight. You will always lose the fight. You can't win it. You will always, always, always lose the fight. You will attempt to nibble on the heel. But the moment you do that, your head will be crushed. You have to understand that when the devil touches your family or the devil is coming after you, when you feel a little pain, you have to understand that for you it is a signal that somebody that belongs under your feet needs to go back right there. needs to go back right where he belongs. I learned to pray because of my mom. Even though God appeared to me, I learned to pray because of my mother. Without my mother, I would have never been cultivated in the things of God because she's the one who helped me. How many of us truly, indeed, probably 98% of us, we know how to pray. We are going to church because of our mothers. Not because too much of our fathers. Yes, there are fathers that push children to pray, but not as much as mothers. Understand this woman of God and man of God. This is why men should support women. Back women up. Because they are spiritually responsible for the destiny of what God has given to us to flourish. It is very important. It is very important. It is extremely important to understand that what God has given me to do, what God has given that brother, that father, that son to do, can only be fulfilled because of a woman. 
So the one who is going to carry it to the finish line is always the target because it's not about how you begin, it's about how you finish. Beginning something doesn't mean you're the owner of it. It's who will finish it. As a woman, your prayer life cannot afford to be weak. As a woman, your prayer life has to be extremely, extremely, extremely important to you. More than your best outfit, more than your best shoes, more than your best anything. Your inward adorning. must be of the highest value. That's why you find even Apostle Paul saying that, let your adorning not be of the plating of hair or this and this, but let it be of the inward man. Notice the adorning was pointed to woman first. Why? There is a reason. Your prayer life is so much more important. A man's prayer life is important too. But the woman's prayer life is exceedingly even more important. Apostle Daniel, I love you, my brother. God bless you. It is exceedingly even more important. Exceedingly even more important. So as a man and as a woman of God, you need to ask yourself that. You need to ask yourself this question. Do you push in prayer? Because if you pray because things have gone wrong, you're already playing defense. The best defense in fighting is always offense. Don't wait for him to be mean when the devil has used him to be mean. Now you start use looking for God. Don't marry him. Don't marry him. If he's not ready to be sanctified and purified to understand. Because many women have this thing of let me and I've counseled so many people with this and this is a bad move. I'm marrying them because one day they will change. Ah, I beg you, sister, don't do it. It's not wisdom. I'm not saying they don't have the capacity to change. But the battle you go through before that change comes. You see, it is easier for somebody to change when they are in need of something. It's an opportunity to show them where, they, where you stand. And if they are truly, truly, truly for you and they value you, the first thing they will do is they will change everything. Because they know that within this woman, I can fulfill what God has given me. My children will be safe. They will be raised at this and this. I can work. Whatever will be built will be sustained. Her wisdom and this. You know what? This is the right person. If he doesn't value you from the beginning, he will not take what you take seriously. Serious. Many of you didn't marry wrong. You just allowed the snake to become a dragon. When you open Revelation, when you open the book of Revelation, it says that old serpent, that dragon, because the devil begins as a snake. It's always easy to kill a snake. But when it becomes a dragon, it begins to spit fire. It becomes much more difficult to deal with a dragon. Why? Their skin is much tougher. I, I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Oh, 
I'll say it again. Many of you did not marry the wrong people. <laughs> you didn't. You just allowed the snake to become a dragon. This is why you should not be attracted to six pack. Mm -hmm. Some people need to be delivered from six pack. Uh, women of God, be delivered from six pack. Be delivered from what kind of car is he driving? Be delivered by what kind of work does he do? Be delivered from this thing. Because they can have all that, but they have no vision for destiny. Therefore, making you of no use. Because if a man has no purpose, then you have no work. Your work should not be to change him. Your work should be to help him to finish what God gave him to do. Not to transform him. Let him be transformed before he comes to you. Uh, I don't know if somebody heard what I said. Don't be attracted to private jet. Don't be attracted to vacation. I'm not saying those things are bad. A man that can have those things and love God and have a purpose in God, it's a bonus. It's not bad. But also a man who has purpose who is going somewhere, not potential, mm. purpose. Yes. Mm. Purpose knows where God wants them to be. If you start with them, you can end up there. Right. You can build a hundred million percent. A hundred million percent. Potential. Is somebody who's still figuring out what they can do. If you go to, if you go and apply for a job, they don't hire you based on potential. Yeah. Oh, you have potential of being a great worker. <laughs> Either you're a good worker or you're not. Either you'll be an asset to the company or not. Nobody is employing you based on potential. They will make you an intern where it doesn't cost them. Am I speaking to myself? I thought I would see him. Hello. If you can hear me, please type number one, 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 type number one. Hallelujah. Okay, people are getting it. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. He just has potential. Ah. Yes, we see the potential, but has he materialized it to become a purpose? Potential is not substance. Because some women are trying to raise grown men. It should never be like that. <coughs> You're supposed to help them, assist them, not raise them. Amen. Amen. This is why you're spending more time fighting yeah. instead of fulfilling. Let me finish with this. You notice the worst 
diabolical spirits that have an influence on the world, they are all considered feminine. Uh, am I am I saying to maybe I should stop? No, no, no. Imagine the name Baal is not as famous as Jezebel. Yet best Jezebel was a priestess of Baal. But everyone will talk about the spirit of Jezebel, not the spirit of Baal that was controlling Jezebel. Why is that? Because what Baal wanted to fulfill, he fulfilled it through who? Jezebel. If you look at the book of Revelation, there's a woman riding a beast. Let me see if you know your Bible. What is she called? Huh? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Will bring a great level of lawlessness. Your influence is so strong, both spiritually and physically. You have to equip yourself. This spirit was actually named after Babylon. You need to be more prayerful because men are also being, and this is no pressure. Remember I said no pressure <laughs> because men have their battles too, but I believe your battle is greater because you're Satan's target. He knows he can get us because of you. Somebody asked a good question. Hold on. Go, go back. Okay, that's it there. Papa, what if God saved me while I was in a relationship with kids and everything, and my kids are saved, but he isn't? That's why I said, eventually they will come to God. Yeah. It's not a guarantee. But eventually, they may come to God, but you have an uphill battle because you will not be working on destiny itself. You'll be working on a man that is making it difficult for you to help them with their purpose. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that you need something spiritual. So you're busy praying and they think your praying is useless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are frustration and conflicts. You, you can't go to church. Come on. But it's an up, uphill battle. A very strong battle and you can't change anyone it will take God to touch their heart and if their heart will hear God then they will change if their heart doesn't hear God then they are, that's another whole different story somebody said we sneak to even listen to you Let me give you points very quickly. Let me make it s simplified so we can finish. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says this. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says this. I will read it for you. I'll put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring. I'll read it again. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. God is saying this to the serpent. God is saying this to the devil. I'll put an enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The devil's target is always the woman. This is why the devil never approached Adam. He approached Eve because he knew that the destiny of Adam will be fulfilled because of Eve. The devil intercepted Eve way before Adam can be intimate with her. Because he knew if I mess Eve up now, then every man that will come from her will also be corrupted. It doesn't matter what seed Adam drops in this good ground. If the ground is messed up, the seed will never come out or the plant will never grow to be what it needs to be. So the devil does not like men, but he ex especially, but he especially hates women. This is why many of us who are rescued because of the prayers of our mothers and our sisters, that's what brought us to God. I am a product of my mother's prayer. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. Remember that? Notice, you don't find a girlfriend. You find a wife. He who finds a wife. So before you can marry, the woman must already be a wife. Not saying that when you are in the courtship stage, she should be doing things that a wife should do. No. But a man should look at her and see this is the favor of God. If I have her, I have been favored by God. And God has given me to finish and to accomplish what he has given me to do. So the devil hates you because you are favor in a man's life. The Lord proved favor over Adam because Eve was available. When God created man in Genesis chapter 1, it says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But notice, this statement was said to the spirit of Adam. Not Adam in the flesh and with a soul. In Genesis chapter 2, you see, God rested from all his work that he created and made. Genesis chapter 2 is specific. Genesis chapter 2 is specific. Very specific. That God is resting not only from creating but from making. Then you see in Genesis chapter 2, it tells you, And the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril. With everything else, God used his word, but with man, he used his hand. That's why he said you formed man by your own hand, meaning that this one is so special. Not only am I speaking, I am involved in it. That's what it means to use his hand. After Adam is created 
and Adam is planted in the garden, the declaration of fruitfulness is not given to him until he finds Eve. So this is the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she shall be mother. Of. That's when God declares, be fruitful and multiply. And the Lord blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. The blessing always comes to a man when he has a wife. And the wife, according to scripture, is not a married woman. I don't know if somebody's hearing me. Technically, we say somebody is a wife because they have a ring on. But according to God, wisdom, a wise woman, a woman that uses wisdom is called a wife. And this is in Proverbs. I don't know if you guys can hear me. A wife is a woman who walks with wisdom, who understands the purposes of God concerning her family. Concerning the man that is, she is going to be married to. And what I'm telling you is, is in scripture. Let me read that. Uh, what about us? Okay, what about us who are waiting, pure before God, wanting and ready to step into our purpose, but our helpmate isn't here? What do we do? God will never send you somebody if, you, if you're not ready. Mm -hmm. To think purity doesn't mean you're ready. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I have never been with anybody. That doesn't mean anything. Do you carry wisdom? That's good. Because relationships are only managed by wisdom. That's right. That's not right. by purity. That's right. that's, that's you can only maintain your purity by wisdom. That's right. Not by purity. The Lord Jesus was wise. His wisdom was so on point. That is why he never fell for the trap of the enemy. We fall into the trap of sin, of temptation, because our wisdom is compromised when we are in need. Because the reality is, to want to be with a husband, or to ha or, or let me say it correctly, to desire to be married is a great and magnificent and genuine and pure desire it definitely is in the sight of god you need to understand that that it is it definitely is but i feel like this is where a lot of our sisters are messing up Many of you have not gone to people who have been married for a long time to be mentored by them. So you have an idea of what it looks like to be in a marriage, but you have never gone and sat down with somebody who has actually been married 30, 20 years, 40 years to sit down and capture their wisdom. To know how to navigate not only your own weakness, but the weakness of the man. This is why the divorce rate is so high, because people think a marriage is a wedding. 
and a wedding and a marriage are two different things. If your life have not merged, even if you are wedded, you're not married. Somebody said, does it matter what finger um, uh, you put your wedding ring on? Yes, it does. It's a prophetic symbol because this finger represents the pastor. It represents the shepherd. You put the ring finger on it because it is, he is the one that is married to the church. Because he represents Jesus. The apostle can touch every, he can run around every office. The prophet points you to a direction. The evangelist is the longest finger. He's the sent out one. The pastor is committed, married to the church, the shepherd representing Jesus. This, the small finger is the teacher representing, it's the only one that can enter your ear to clean you, to give you sound doctrine. Amen. It's prophetic. That's what fivefold means. So this is a call to you to pray. To be extremely prayerful. To pursue after God, to chase after God, and to become all that God wants you to be. Because on the day you become that, the world becomes a better place. So understand you have a target on your back. That doesn't mean you should be afraid. You have to remember the devil only attacks those who is threatened by. The devil doesn't attack the weak. He only attacks those who he's threatened by. Yeah. Whoever is a threat is the one the devil wants. Because he knows if he gets you, he gets everybody else. So to our mothers and our sisters, let us make prayer important. And to all the men, we need to pray them more for them because they are our preservation. What God has given us will be fulfilled because of them. And it cannot be done without them. I want you to grab what you want to give to God. I want you to go and give and then we'll be back to pray.